Hating story. Hating stories. Okay. <laughs> It's Jay and today I'm here with my August wrap-up video for 2018. I'm splitting it into two parts because I read 14 books so we're gonna talk about seven in this video, seven in the next video. So without further ado, let us get started. First book I'm gonna talk about is A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney and I ended up giving this a two out of five stars. I was so excited about this. It was described as Alice in Wonderland meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So it follows a young African-American girl named Alice who is trying to balance her regular school life and her family life with being a monster slayer in Wonderland. Like I said, I only gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. It fell very short for me. I didn't like the writing style. I thought it was super choppy. You're kind of just thrown into the plot without any real backstory and I kept thinking that as the story progressed it would start to make sense but it honestly just never made sense. Half of the time I was honestly not even knowing what was going on with the story. It was honestly just a bunch of random thoughts and like plot ideas thrown into the book without any real development whatsoever. The one thing I will say is that I liked the attempt of bringing in characters that you see in the original story but I don't think that it was executed very well. The characters were very bland and I didn't really relate to any of them. I just wasn't interested in what happened to them. I didn't really care. I know that a lot of people have been looking forward to this book. I believe it releases in September sometime. So if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in, then I would say check it out. It just wasn't for me. The next book that I read is Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. I finally finished this trilogy. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. I was going to give it a 5 stars, but it started to drag on for me at the end. I mean, it's it's a chunker of a book. I feel like it definitely could have been shortened or even split into four books instead of having one giant ass book at the end. I found that not a lot actually happened in this book. It felt a lot like a filler book. I will say that I still love every single character in this series. They are just so lovable. I also think that Lainey Taylor is just such an incredible writer and her world building is some of the best I've ever read. I also really liked how they started mixing science into like the otherworldly stuff in the book. That was really interesting to read about. Although I didn't love how the series ended, I'm still so glad that I finally finished it and I'm definitely looking forward to more of Lainey Taylor's writing because I need more of it ASAP. The next book that I have I was actually very pleasantly surprised by and it is Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows 22 year old Sydney who thought that her 22nd year of life was going to be amazing but on the day of her birthday, she finds out that her best friend and her boyfriend have been cheating on her with each other. After this discovery, she finds herself with nowhere to live. That's when her very intriguing neighbor comes and offers her to stay at his place until she can get back on her feet. I know that Colleen Hoover is a very controversial author. A lot of people hate her. A lot of people also like her. I'm one of the people that have a very, like, hate love relationship with her. Some of her books I really don't like but then other books like this one I really enjoy. I usually really don't like cheating stories because I've been cheated on before and I know how much it sucks so in my head I'm like I'm not gonna like this book but I'll read it anyways and I was so pleasantly surprised by it. I definitely don't agree with everything that the characters did. I do like how the story progressed and how the whole situation ended and how every character in the book kind of agreed on what was happening. I don't want to say what actually happens because like spoilers but it was done very well in my opinion. One thing I will say that really bothered me about this book was Sydney's character. She cried pretty much the entire book. Every 10 pages was her being depressed at life and just crying. Just so much tears. Why? Like ugh, it got 
it got very annoying after a while. I liked Ridge and how he dealt with his very difficult situation. I like how he constantly communicated with everybody around him so he wasn't really hiding things. Again, can't say what is actually happening because spoilers, but I think that he handled everything very well. I will say Warren, Ridge's best friend and roommate, is by far my favorite character in the book. He's definitely a huge comic relief for the more serious things that are discussed in it. I also really liked the slow burn romance of this. I personally hate Insta Love. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that. I also really liked the dual perspectives between Ridge and Sydney and how they flowed so effortlessly together, and it was really interesting to see the situation from one person's point of view and then instantly be in the other person's point of view during the same situation. Honestly, this book was just a giant emotional roller coaster, and I definitely recommend it if you're not super into Colleen Hoover's book. I think that this is one of her good ones. Also, super fun fact, there is a soundtrack that goes with this book, so all the songs that Ridge and Sydney write together are actually produced and you can listen to them, so you should probably do that because it was actually really cool to experience while reading. The next book that I read was Talon by Julie Kagawa, and this is my first Julie Kagawa book. Everybody has told me that I need to read her books, so there you go, finally read it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After being hunted almost to extinction by the Order of St. George, dragons decide to infiltrate the human society. So during one summer, hatchling Ember Hill and her twin brother Dante are assigned to a similar into the human society and basically learn how to be human before they start their training to become full members of Talon, which is a secret organization for dragons. When the Order discovers that there may be dragons in town, they send two of their agents to assassinate them, basically. So when one of the agents, Garrett, starts having feelings for Ember, things become a little complicated. Okay, so first of all, dragons. I will read anything with dragons ever since I read The Last Name of Sara by Kristen Cicerelli. I just need all the dragon stories. I definitely wish that there were more dragons actually being shown in this story. It was more the last like three quarters of the book where the dragons were actually a big highlight of the book. So wish there was more, but I mean, it is the first in a series, so I'm assuming there's going to be more as it progresses. I really like learning the backstory of Talon and the Order. The whole concept of it being rogue, which is basically quitting the Talon and going off to be a dragon by yourself, was really interesting to me. I kind of want to know more about it. The next book is called Rogue, so I'm assuming we're going to learn more, so I'm very excited about that. I like the changing point of views between Ember and Garrett and Riley, who is one of the rogues in the book. I will say that Ember kind of got on my nerves at times. She was very self-centered and put a lot of people in danger, and it just kind of annoyed me at times. I also don't know which love interest I want her to end up with. They both kind of bothered me a lot, and I didn't really feel a connection between either of them, to be honest. I kind of felt like the love triangle was just thrown in to say that there was a love triangle. Definitely a huge cliffhanger at the end, so I am very intrigued to see how the story progresses, although I don't own any of the rest of the series, so we're gonna have to go on a lookout for that. The next book I have is Pretty Baby by Mary Kubica, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows a woman named Heidi Wood who can't help but notice a woman and her baby standing outside the train in the rain one day. So without consulting her husband, Heidi decides that she's going to bring Willow and her baby back to her house. As certain secrets of Willow's past come to light, Heidi realizes that her family may actually be in danger because of her actions. I really liked how the story was told in three different perspectives. You get Heidi's take on the world, you also get the thoughts of Chris, who is Heidi's husband, and then you also get Willow's backstory throughout the entire thing. It definitely allowed for a much more interesting way for the story to be unfolded. A lot of people have said that they found that the plot was unraveled too slowly, but in my opinion, I thought it was done very well. I thought that the pacing was perfect. I listened to it on audiobook, so that might have made the difference to me, but I loved trying to piece everything together. Willow's backstory is told throughout the whole story, and it's really interesting to see because it starts from where she left her house and then it slowly goes to present day and the current time period. And it's just really interesting to, to see how Willow ended up being with Heidi and her family. I just personally really enjoyed this book so I definitely recommend it if you want a super thrilling suspense novel. This is a good one. Next book that I read was The Crossover by Heather Hoffst and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I 
I don't really know how to feel about it still, to be honest. The book follows Ella, whose brother Weston died 12 years ago. Years later, her father is being laid to rest, and on that day, Ella discovers that she is actually able to travel between universes, and she travels to this universe where aliens are threatening to attack, and so she's given the responsibility to destroy these aliens and save this alternate universe in order to save her own universe. The book did grab my attention, and I was very interested to see where it progressed but as the story went on it just got not good. Honestly kind of like a roller coaster when you're going up and you're like fuck yeah this is gonna be great this is gonna be an awesome time this is great and then you get to the top and you're like ah shit this was a bad idea and then it just goes downhill from there. Yeah that was this book. At the beginning I really liked the characters. I thought they were intriguing. I wanted to know more about them, but as the story progressed, they just got more and more annoying, and I hated the way they all interacted with each other. The dialogue in the book seemed very forced, and I just didn't like it at all. I found myself skimming conversations most of the time. I did really enjoy the aliens and their whole plot and plan for world domination. That was kind of cool. I definitely think that the story had potential, but overall execution was not my thing. And then the final book I'll talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Mercy Brown by Tiki Kos, and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars as well. So this book follows 17-year-old Mercy Brown, who has been called a freak of nature for her entire life. She's been called many things, the most prominent one being a vampire, and so she decides that for her senior year of high school she wants to be invisible. But then a new boy named Sebastian shows up at her school and she discovers that vampires are actually real and they're threatening to attack her town. Working with her best friend Amanda and this new mysterious boy, she decides that she is going to destroy all the vampires before they can destroy her hometown. This book is very 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 short, which I found to be a bit of a flaw for the story. Everything took place in the span of four to five days and it just felt very rushed in my opinion. Opinion. I did enjoy Mercy as a main character. I definitely think that she handled things very well for all the shit that was going down. I mean, like vampires attacking your hometown. I would lose my shit, but she was very level-headed throughout the whole thing. I didn't like Sebastian. I thought he was very one-dimensional. I didn't connect to him at all. I didn't care what happened to him. I also think that the insta-love was a little bit ridiculous. It was within the span of one hour they met and then they were making out on Mercy's bed. So like... I mean, teenage hormones, but like, come on, that's a bit ridiculous here. One thing I did really like about this story was all the references to other vampire stories like Twilight. I thought it was very funny because I've read all of those books. Another fun fact about this book, Mercy Brown was actually a real person, so if you're ever interested to know about Mercy Brown, Google it. It's actually really interesting. Alright guys, so that was the first seven books that I read for this month of August. I will have my part two up sometime soon, so stay tuned for that. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, or what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!